The Walt Disney Company has been characterized for finding the most brilliant and creative minds so they can develop amazing stories, magical places, and unforgettable characters, whether it's in their movies or the parks. And thanks to these wonderful minds, we've been blessed with some of the cutest characters that ever existed. So today, we go back to our search for Disney's cutest animatronics. Hello, I'm Claire Loughran, co-host of the Inside the Disney Vault podcast. The Three Common Heroes When Walt started developing animatronics, one of his dreams was having an attraction inside a theater where many Disney characters would not only put on a show, but would be sitting in the boxes with the guests, heckling. This dream came true when Imagineers started planning attractions for Walt Disney World's 1971 opening. Mickey Mouse Review was one of Magic Kingdom's opening day attractions. This attraction featured lots of different Disney characters singing and dancing and putting on a fantastic show. The show had 73 different Disney characters and 81 animatronics. So you can imagine that this attraction was full of cute animatronics. It was also the only attraction where we could find an animatronic Mickey Mouse. The show had many numbers that included amazing Disney character animatronics. There was the orchestra scene that had 23 different Disney characters, a Three Little Pigs scene, a Snow White scene, an Alice in Wonderland scene, a Cinderella scene, and many more. One of these scenes was the Three Caballeros scene. During this number, a flying carpet rose from the left of the orchestra. On this carpet, we could find the Three Caballeros, Donald, Panchito, and Jose Carioca singing the Three Caballeros theme in a blaze of music and color. The coolest part about this scene is that each of the caballeros appeared and disappeared many times across the stage while singing their song. Just before the song ended, they appeared together again on the carpet and then disappeared. The show lasted almost 10 minutes. It was full of cute animatronics and it was really cool. But as time passed, fewer people were visiting it. In fact, the attraction was downgraded from an E to a D ticket attraction, which was pretty rare. Then, when the Oriental Land Company began touring Disneyland and Disney World and choosing the attractions they wanted to have in the new Tokyo Disneyland Park, the Mickey Mouse Review was on top of their list. And it was a lot less expensive to ship the original attraction overseas instead of recreating it. So the attraction closed on September 14, 1980 and reopened in Tokyo Disneyland on April 15, 1983. The attraction was opened for another 26 years until it sadly closed on May 25, 2006 to be replaced by Mickey's Philhar Magic. The animatronics were retired. We know that Mickey's animatronic is safe and sound in the Walt Disney archives. It was even on display in the 2011 D23 Expo, Treasures of the Walt Disney Archives. And we also know where the three caballeros are currently. The three caballeros have been beloved characters since the movie came out in 1944. This movie is very cute and has some of the most lovable characters. The film took Donald with his friends Panchito Pistolas and Jose Carioca through Mexico and Brazil. And while Panchito is the only Mexican caballero, these characters were an amazing fit to create the first IP attraction in the World Showcase at Epcot. So in 2007, Grand Fiesta Tour starring the three caballeros replaced El Rio del Tiempo in the Mexico Pavilion at Epcot. The ride takes us to Mexico, where the three caballeros are going to be performing a concert. But we find out that Donald has run off, so we need to help Jose and Panchito look for him so they can find him in time for the concert. So during the ride, we see Donald touring Mexico and Jose and Panchito on a magic serape looking for him. At the end of the ride, the boat takes us to Mexico City, where we can see fireworks off overhead and the three caballeros finally performing their concert. Since the ride's opening in 2007 until 2015, the Three Caballeros concert was shown on screen. But then on December 4, 2015, Disney quietly replaced this screen with the Three Caballeros animatronics, recycled from the Mickey Mouse Review attraction. We love these cute birds, and we're so happy that they can still be seen. Olaf. Anna, Elsa, Sven. Samantha? <laughs> I don't even know it's Samantha. <laughs> Let's be honest, Olaf has been one of Disney fans' favorite characters since Frozen came out back in 2013. And how could he not be if he's a wonderful mix between Josh Gad's voice, an incredibly cute design, and the creativity used for developing the character's charisma and personality? 
He is not only hilarious, but he is a smart, empathetic, and cute character that makes such a great synergy with every other character in the movie. That's why when Disney was planning on reimagining Epcot's Maelstrom into Frozen Ever After, Imagineers knew that Olaf had to be a huge part of the ride. So in June 2016, Frozen Ever After opened its doors. This new ride uses a combination of physical sets, audio animatronics, and projections to bring the hit movie to life in a new and exciting way. And one of the cutest and most impressive animatronics of this ride is Olaf. Imagineers created this animatronic so perfectly that its fluid movements make it hard to tell it apart from animation. This figure also has the help of projection technology for its eyes. And even though we're not big fans of projection on animatronics, it does not take away from the awesome job Imagineers made on this cute character. Olaf sings, moves, and even walks across the stage. All of this thanks to a special rig that was adapted for the animatronic. In this scene, Olaf sings a modified version of Do You Want to Build a Snowman? He appears again as soon as we enter Elsa's palace. But this is not the first time an Olaf animatronic has appeared at a Disney park. Back in 2013, Disneyland opened a new meet and greet experience in Fantasyland, where guests could meet Anna and Elsa. This experience was obviously very popular, and it had a wait time of up to 120 minutes. So Imagineers created an animatronic Olaf that waited outside with guests. This temporary experience only lasted about a year, and sadly, this animatronic was never seen again. Olaf is so cute, and we're glad we get to see him in animatronic form. Oddball and the 101 Dalmatians Animals 101 Dalmatians is a huge classic and such a cute movie. People all over seem to love it. And so, Disney decided to create a live-action remake of it. The film sadly did not have great reception with critics and was very polemic because many irresponsible people watched the movie, bought Dalmatian puppies right after, and then when they grew tired, abandoned them. But in spite of these dilemmas, we can't deny the huge work that everybody who worked on the project did. Glenn Close as Cruella was amazing and terrifying at the same time. But the best part of this remake was able to be done because of the huge talent of Industrial Light and Magic and Jim Henson's Creature Shop, who created effects and animatronics for the film. John Hughes and Stephen Herrick's intention was to use real animals in the making of 101 Dalmatians, and they did. However, there are some shots and scenes which would not have been possible without the wizardry of these studios. Jim Henson's Creature Shop already had lots of experience on projects of this type, having worked and won many awards for projects like Babe. In particular, the Creature Shop was commissioned to produce a range of young and newborn animatronic puppies. Other animatronic creations include the back end of a horse, used to catapult Cruella through a barn door, an Airedale dog, a dead tiger, and a raccoon and pig. Industrial Light and Magic added puppies to scenes to give the illusion of 99 puppies fleeing from Horace and Jasper, as well as digitally renovating the DeVille Mansion and multiplying Pongo and Purdy's puppies to give the illusion of 1,000 puppies. To promote the movie, Disney recreated the creature shop inside of the now-retired backstage pass attraction at Disney's Hollywood Studios, and they brought these animatronics so guests could see them and interact with them. Then, in 2000, the film's sequel, 102 Dalmatians, came out. This time, Neil Scanlon was in charge of creating the animatronics. If this name sounds familiar to you, it might be because we have talked about him before. He was responsible for creating the Crystal Foxes and the Fathiers, two of our cutest animatronics from part one. For this sequel, there were many high-tech animatronics created. We have talked about how there are animatronics that are controlled remotely by puppeteers. This time, they used only one console that could be configured to handle different animatronics. Among the many animatronics that were created for this film, we can find two red macaws that were moved with the console and a third one that was created with a special rig that allowed it to walk. The newborn puppies were so realistic, it was hard to tell them apart from real puppies. In this sequel, we have a new star. Oddball is a cute puppy that never developed spots. This new puppy had to be recreated as an animatronic and was used during production within group puppy sequences. It was beautifully and realistically detailed, right down to the individual claws on each paw. The front paws feature two slightly protruding metal rods, and there are also screw holes to the plastic foot plates of the rear paws. Originally, the animatronics would have given movement to the neck and possibly slight movement within the body. There were several oddball animatronics made, and one of these was auctioned by iCollector.com. It was sold for 650 pounds, which is a steal considering the technology and developing that went with creating it. 
We love these movies, even if they're not perfect. The great work behind them should really be appreciated. Pascal Animatronic on June 14, 2018, the Oriental Land Company Limited announced that an agreement had been reached with the Walt Disney Company on plans for developing a new themed port at Tokyo Disney Sea, which will also include a new Disney hotel. The expansion at Tokyo Disney Sea will create an eighth themed port that is inspired by a magical spring leading to a world of Disney fantasy. This area will be called Fantasy Springs and will be comprised of three distinct areas recreating the fantastic worlds from Frozen, Tangled, and Peter Pan. Guests will get to visit Anna and Elsa's Kingdom of Arendelle, the forest and tower where Rapunzel lives, and the home of Peter Pan, the Lost Boys, and Tinkerbell in Neverland. This area will have four new attractions, three restaurants, one shop, and of course, the new hotel. And one of these attractions will be what we've waited for since 2010, an attraction that follows Rapunzel to the Lantern Festival. In the attraction, guests will board gondolas for a romantic boat tour of Rapunzel's best day ever as she journeys with Flynn to the Lantern Festival. Countless flickering lanterns illuminate the attraction's climactic scene while Rapunzel and Flynn sing an iconic song from the film, building to an unforgettable finale. This ride sounds fantastic, and we can't wait until it opens in 2022. We expect that this ride will be filled with awesome animatronics and some of the cutest, too. Back in September, Walt Disney Imagineering released a short video on their YouTube channel resuming one of the lessons from their online course, Imagineering in a Box. Imagineering in a Box is a free online educational curriculum available through Khan Academy, where Disney Imagineers share their expertise from hundreds of career disciplines around the world. We'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. But back to the video. They released a lesson talking about character development, and in this video they showed us a glimpse of the latest all-electronic animatronic figure, Pascal. Pascal is entirely electrically powered instead of hydraulic or pneumatic based, like most animatronics used at the parks. This allows for more realistic fluid movements and micro-movements. It has not been confirmed that he will be used for the Tangled attraction, and some people speculate that he might be used for meet and greets, but we doubt it. Either case, he is so cute, and we can't wait to see him in action. Chengdu. Tokyo Disney Sea is considered one of the best Disney parks, if not the best Disney park in the world. It's got a fantastic theming and equally impressive rides. One of these rides is Sinbad's Storybook Voyage. The dark ride opened as Sinbad's Seven Voyages on September 4, 2001. The original version was not that popular among guests because it had a very dark tone. It was scary and unfriendly and people didn't like it. So in 2006, the ride closed so it could be reimagined. The new version opened on March 29, 2007, and it became an instant classic. For this new version, Imagineers restaged most scenes, altered many of the animatronic figures, and gave the ride's story more focus. They added the now famous Compass of Your Heart song, written by none other than Alan Menken. But more importantly, they added Chan Du. Chan Du is Sinbad's cute sidekick. When the ride was changed, Sinbad's human crew was recast as pirates or other figures, so Sinbad needed a sidekick, and Chan Du was the perfect one. Chan Du became Sinbad's only recurring companion, and the two voyage out on adventures and help people along the way. Chan Du can be seen in almost every scene during this ride. At the start of the ride, we find ourselves entering Sinbad's home village in Baghdad, where the people of the village are wishing Sinbad and Chandu a safe journey. Here we can see Chandu on Sinbad's boat with a map in his mouth. We pass through the tunnel and get to a rainstorm where we can see Sinbad's broken ship and two mermaids who saved Sinbad and Chandu. They get another boat and we see Chandu on top of the sail as Sinbad thanks the mermaids for saving them. Next, on Ruck Island, Sinbad needs to stop pirates who are attacking the magical rock birds. During this scene, we see Chandu pouncing on one of the pirates' heads. Sinbad and Chandu succeed and take one of the birds' magical feathers to the cave of the giant, where they find the giant locked inside a cell. During the scene, Chandu is seen tying up another pirate with a pearl necklace. Sinbad uses the feather to unlock the cell and free the giant who thanks Sinbad for freeing him by gifting him his gold. In this scene, we don't see Chandu, just a peek of his tail hiding in the treasure chest with a tiger engraved on it. Sinbad continues with his adventures and arrives in the Sultan's palace, where the Sultan asks him to save a village that has been overtaken by monkeys. Here, Chandu appears standing on a drum carried by a group of citizens. 
When they reach the monkey village, Chandu decides to stay on the boat and only peeks behind a bunch of bananas. On their way back to the village, Sinbad and Chandu find a giant whale who speeds up their journey. In this scene, we can see Chandu playing on the whale's water spout. They arrive safely back home and share everything they found during the voyage with the people in the village. In the end, Chandu is seen sleeping on top of a rope as Sinbad thanks the guests for joining him on his voyage. We can all agree that Chandu is one of the cutest sidekicks in any Disney park ride and, of course, one of the cutest animatronics. And thankfully, there is a lot of Chandu merch at Tokyo Disney Sea. And even one of Tokyo Disney Sea's most popular snacks sold at the Sultan's Oasis snack stand. Babu Frick. The Skywalker saga sadly came to an end this past December, ending more than 40 years of fantastic adventures and stories. For many of us, this movie was a wonderful way to pay tribute to the legacy of one of our favorite sagas. And one of the ways this trilogy did that was by bringing back practical effects and animatronics to tell the story. In Rise of Skywalker, many new characters were introduced, but without a doubt, the one that stole fans' hearts everywhere was Babu Frick. <coughs> Babu Frick is an Anzellan droid smith who works among the spice runners of Kijimi. It's an accomplished hacker and can reprogram or modify virtually any droid, regardless of any security measures protecting its systems. He was first revealed during the 2019 Force Friday merchandise reveal, but people really fell in love with him after watching the film. Babu Frick is an animatronic created, again by the Star Wars animatronic master, Neil Scanlan. This team managed to create a new, cute, and endearing character that joined the ranks of cuteness, along with R2-D2, the Ewoks, Porgs, and most recently, Baby Yoda of the Child, who we mentioned in part one of this video. To create this character, the team sculpted and created a tiny puppet animatronic that looked interesting and weird at the same time. The cutest part of this character not only comes from his interesting aspect, but also with his personality. Babu Frick is voiced by Shirley Henderson, an actress famously known for playing Moaning Myrtle in the Harry Potter movies. The joint work of the Scanlan and Henderson team makes Babu Frick an unforgettable character, and successively one of the cutest in the history of cinema and animatronics. <laughs>